Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can work with imported mesh files, creating our own new geometry, adding them to the mesh body, and ultimately being able to export and 3D print them. So the case that we're looking at here is if you find a file online that's already converted to an STL, an OBJ, or 3MF, and you need to add something to it or change it in some way. This is a very common thing that happens. Infusion isn't generally considered a mesh modeling program. However, we have plenty of tools and we can handle this type of work. So first thing to note, the best option would be to generate face groups and go through the process of trying to convert the mesh. However, this design, even though it's relatively small, this is the end of a GoPro mount, this has over 10,000 faces and that process just isn't going to work but we have some other tools that we can use. So the two things that we're going to be doing is we're gonna look at how we can increase the diameter of the hole, and we're gonna look at how we can add geometry to the bottom of this, maybe a new mounting technique that we want to explore. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is go to our solid tools, create a sketch, and in this case, we're gonna create a sketch on the right plane. We're gonna add a circle, and this is gonna be six millimeter diameter. You notice that this is slightly larger than what's here. So if you downloaded this and 3D printed it and it didn't work, maybe the screw didn't fit, then increasing the diameter is a common thing that you would need to do. We're gonna extrude this and we're gonna pull it out symmetric in both directions and say, okay. Now, if we go to our mesh tools and we try to use the mesh combine, we aren't able to select that B-Rep body. So what we need to do is a process called tessellate. What we're going to be doing is converting our B-Rep or our solid body to a mesh body. Once we convert it to a mesh body, then we can use the combine tool. In this case, we're going to use the cut tool, select our target, and then select our tool and say OK. What Fusion is going to do is it's going to use the tool body, in this case our extruded cylinder, and it's going to remove the overlapping sections of the underlying mesh. Now, a word of caution here is we really want to pay attention to the density of the mesh that we're working with. You don't want to make a super low polygon cylinder and then try to remove it from something that has a lot of mesh elements like this. So you want to try to match the, the number of mesh elements that you have between the two bodies. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just create a new, more complex B-Rep on the bottom. So I'm going to use a two-point rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and just drag it down and I'm going to start to add some dimensions. Now on this side we're going to say 12 millimeters. Over here it's going to be a little bit smaller. We're going to say 9 millimeters and then on the back side we'll say 9 millimeters as well. And then on the front side we want a bit more room. Maybe we're exploring some different mounting options so I'm going to say 25 millimeters. We're going to extrude this and obviously it's not in the right location so we're going to go offset and I'm going to say minus 15 millimeters. Then I'm going to begin dragging this up. And one important thing here is we want to make sure that we are at least touching, if not overlapping, with the existing mesh. You can see here that this small gap, that's just simply not going to work. A fusion will allow us to combine multiple meshes that aren't touching. And that can be problematic because if we send it to a slicer and we try to 3D print two mesh bodies that aren't touching, well, we're going to get two parts. And that's not what we want here. So make sure that they are touching or overlapping. You can do this process in Mesh Direct Edit by creating planes and selecting mesh elements, but in this case, we're just gonna have a small overlap. It'll be perfectly fine for what we're doing. We're gonna add some fillets to the corners just to simply round these off. So go ahead and just grab each corner. I'm gonna say four millimeters, and then I'm gonna add a chamfer to the top edge. Now chamfers are great when you're 3D printing. They work better than fillets when you're talking about the Z direction or the direction that the build plate is moving up and down in. And in cases of XY, so these corners, fillets are perfectly fine and 3D printers do a great job with that. Now on the bottom, we're going to create some new mounting options. I'm just gonna go ahead and place a couple of circles down here. I'm gonna use the equal constraint to make sure the insides and the outsides are the same. We're going to use the horizontal vertical to make sure those two are vertical in relation to each other. Make sure this is horizontal relative to the origin. Then I'm going to start adding some dimensions. So this is five millimeters inside, 10 outside, and I want to give it an offset from here to here. I'm going to say that this is two millimeters, and then we'll give this an overall vertical distance of 16. Then we're going to just simply extrude these and add them just like any other solid modeling process that you'd be going through. So now if we look at our bodies folder, we have a solid body, a B-Rep body, 
and we have a mesh body. And we wanna combine those two together. Now, similar to what we did with the cylinder to increase the hole size, we're going to tessellate. Now, we're gonna tessellate this and say okay. And again, we really wanna focus on mesh elements. Now, this is a bit different than the hole because we're not dealing with a cylinder. We're not dealing with removing a hole from a mesh. We are gonna be looking at combining this mesh face with a lot of small triangles in the corners. So the way that this happens, when we use combine, we wanna make sure that we're using the join option and we can tell the icon is different than merge. This is going to remove the overlapping sections and remesh the intersections. So we're gonna select the tool and the target, say okay, and because of the number of triangles, this process may take a little while, depending on the imported model you're working with. What we're gonna do is we're gonna see that at those corner intersections, we now see a bunch of small triangles to make this work. Now, if we go to inspect and we take a look at a section analysis, what we're going to see is that now we've got a nice clean intersection between the two mesh bodies. Any of the overlap has been completely removed. And now we could send this thing to a slicer to 3D print and everything is good to go. So if we're looking at a more complex model, something with a lot more mesh triangles, with lots of facets, then the process is going to be the same, but the processing time will likely be a bit higher. So keep that in mind, the complexity of the designs that you're working with oftentimes are going to have an effect on how well this process works. And another thing to keep in mind is everything that we've done up to this point is captured in the timeline, which means that we can go into our sketches, we can show our dimensions, and we can say, maybe this needs to be 30 millimeters. Now it's gonna update the original B-Rep, it's gonna update the fillets and chamfers, all the features that were based on that original design, It'll go through the process of tessellating it or turning it into a mesh and joining it with the other mesh body. So again, it's a great way for us to have control over these different features, and we can always go back and make those changes. Now, if you don't wanna do that, of course you can go into direct edit and work directly with the mesh, but keeping in mind that keeping that history in there can be a very helpful asset is something that I would strongly consider. So at this point, is this something that you've done before? Have you found a 3D model that you needed to make some slight adjustments to, but it was a mesh and you used another program? Is it something that you think you could do in Fusion 360? I'd like to hear your comments below, so go ahead and leave them. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.